Hey, how's it going everyone? Just want to do a lesson on um, the God of the Bible. Uh, just trying to do a couple lessons about, you know, his character and how it impacts us on more of a day to day. But um, this one is how God of the Bible is a God of extremes. And um, in many ways, this is <clears throat> one of the reasons why a lot of people will criticize the Bible, you know, from the outside looking in, from people outside the faith. Uh, it gives them a lot of ammo to question the God of the Bible and to think that, you know, criticize him for being, you know, extreme, uh, insane and all that kind of stuff, especially in the time that we live in where being middle of the road, you know, going with the, the crowd, the masses is, is, uh, is very, very important, um, you know, to quote unquote fit in. And so um, I suspect, obviously, it hasn't always been like that throughout human history, but <clears throat> it's amplified in the times that we live in and it's not um subsiding at all you know it's only going to grow in, in um intensity and it's you know it's really uh, we're seeing that really in all all aspects of our life everywhere we look um you know we're required to sort of blend in but um for people quote unquote inside the faith it's um it puts us in a position where we have to make decisions and i think in these times again i feel like these times are very very exaggerated with the number of lies that are out there that are now obvious um, and stuff, uh, it's very easy to, to pick God, you know, and so I'm hope, hoping that people have already sort of made the decision what extreme to go to, um, if it's not already done, you know, or if it's required of us, um, to, to choose God, uh, in, in all situations. But, um, you know, just again, for sort of further affirmation that, um, first God does require us to make sometimes extreme decisions and then to choose God, you know, it's like the, everything else that is uh, is competing against God is uh, is ridiculous, you know, and it's made by God, so it's uh, it's a bad decision um, to choose the creation over the Creator. So, you know, there's I, I could think of many many more examples than the few that I've pulled up here, but um, I think these the the one that's kind of the most obvious, just the entire narrative of the Bible and Christianity, is we have extreme purity in Jesus Christ being dealt extreme um, punishment, you know, and um, brutalization and um, torture. And so that in and of itself, we don't, I don't even need to pull out any other uh, examples. Uh, like I said, there are many, but that alone is enough to know that the God of the Bible is, is extreme, you know, and um, again, outside looking in, people have, you know, written probably books, definitely articles on how that's like, essentially they call it divine child abuse. Um, you could call that evil. You could call that unfair. You could call that um, uh, crazy, um, sadistic. All these terms could be, uh, you know, ways to describe um, that act, you know, that, um, that uh, vicious death that Jesus Christ went through <clears throat> at the hands of people that he came to love orchestrated by the Heavenly Father, all those um, adjectives are appropriate, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's logical to, to look at it that way uh, from, earth, from an earthly perspective. And I just, uh, again, I would say my entire channel is to try and look at the world uh, through spiritual eyes from the top down, you know, from God's vantage point down. And um, a lot of things will still not make sense, but um, other things will, you know, and we will move from a from position on many things from criticism or ignoring God to um, worship. And so that's uh, what I would hope for, for me uh, in my own life and um, for anybody out there who has an ear uh, to the God of the Bible. So that in and of itself is extreme, you know, and um, that's really everything I'm gonna say here is just uh, pales in comparison to that as an example and support. But just starting from uh, really, you know, the things that God could use uh, to, to judge or to get us to um, choose him over something else, money is the first thing. And so usually the first thing, Matthew 6, 24 reads, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So this again is, proof why the Christian church is sold out, Catholic church, all that. 
you know, they, they say, you know, we don't talk about money. Some churches don't, most churches don't, almost all churches don't, I would say. But it's saying here in Matthew 6, 24, that that is the biggest quote unquote competition for God. So money should be spoken of every day, routinely, you know, in the church, um, not just at the micro level, but um, money, you know, the money system, you know, and um, how evil it is. And it's obvious. And even the mainstream is admitting that the system is unfair. So, you know, the reason why the churches can't is because of the 501c3, but also uh, it would not allow the end times to manifest the way that I believe it's happening right before our eyes. So God is saying that um, you can't serve money. You know, you can't. And, and, it's, and it says that you can't do anything down the middle because you'll despise the other. So even if we have a slight inclination towards uh, money, you know, and accumulating it, even some um, will will hate God, you know, and um, that's a slippery slope. And I think that that's um, very, very difficult, you know, to know how to balance that because, you know, we need money, credit, I call them tokens to, to quote unquote, survive, to live. But, um, you know, we're, we're called here to not um, worship it. We actually have to hate one in order to love the other. And so, um, that's that's very easy to do in this time. I think it's um, not as easy in a past time when the money system was not as satanic, but uh, it's very easy to fulfill this, in my opinion. That's the one beauty about potentially living in the end times. A lot of these things are kind of easy for me, at least, um, to at least sort of think about. Uh, it's easy for me to hate money because, first of all, I don't have a lot. And even if I did, <clears throat> this would be a bad time to be rich because... The whole system is unstable you know so you can't even enjoy your wealth in my opinion for very long so and it's not even money it's just like a bunch of tokens you know they're just little tokens that you know you just to me it's like the tokens you get when you go to a theme park or something like that it's just you get to go spend it on whatever is in that theme park and the theme park just happens to be uh this flat earth with a dome over it so uh, or america however you think about it but for me personally, it's very, very easy to um, hate money because just the concept of the fractional reserve banking system to me is ridiculous and satanic. And um, the money we have uh, could be just a result of someone charging someone else interest, which to me, I don't even like. I don't even sometimes like holding the money, to be honest. Like, I, I just, uh, I find it repulsive, you know, and uh, it's just, uh, again, it's not just the money itself. There's all the other <clears throat> things associated with it being you know, indoctrinated with ball earth and, you know, um, drinking the corporate Kool-Aid that I did for many years and all that. So there's a lot sort of underpinning that hatred. It's not just Matthew 624. But uh, again, I, I hope that it's very easy for people to sort of honor this. And it's kind of obvious that this is the case. I mean, if people are worshiping money, in particular, in the times that we live in now, uh, God cannot be found, you know, because the money itself is satanic, you know, just the way it's um, created out of thin air. Um, so that's that's one and then another one that's kind of well known in the Old Testament Genesis 22 and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham <clears throat> and said unto him, Abraham and he said behold here I am so again we we know that God tempts people you know and that's in the <clears throat> excuse me Lord's Prayer uh, that I read that I read during my live streams where Jesus says do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil he's praying to the Most High he's asking us to pray to God that way God will tempt us, you know, he wants to know where our allegiance is, <laughs> where our heart is, where our mind will be. And um, that's just a fact, you know, and people don't like that. But uh, God is about to tempt people, in my opinion, with the mark of the beast. <clears throat> and anybody stupid enough to take it. Uh, I mean, that's just a faithless degenerate. Uh, so in this chapter, God basically asked Abraham to uh, sacrifice his son. <clears throat> literally kill his son uh and he just says go do it and um in verse 10 abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his own son uh, and the angel of the lord came unto him out of heaven and said abraham abraham and he said here i am and he said lay not thine hand upon the lad neither do thou anything unto him for now i know that thou fearest god seeing how thou has not withheld thy son thine only son from me so he took his most quote prized possession and asked him to uh sacrifice it uh, to again test him and so this uh, again is very very extreme this would be considered uh, a homicide uh, in the in the satanic days that we live in now and completely evil uh, this would be a life in prison 
uh, for Abraham. And uh, he, no one's going to buy the story. God told me to, <laughs> you know, like it's not funny, but uh, that's that's the world that we live in. And this is the God that uh, created us, you know, if the earth is flat, in my opinion. So this is uh, the God of the Bible, you know. And so, again, it's it's further evidence to me that, first of all, there's things that he asked for that we can't understand, you know, just he's allowed to ask, you know. And in my opinion, again, in the times that we live in now that <clears throat> we know that everything to me, if God exists, he made everything. So it's not technically even Abraham's son, it's God's. Like everything that's physical, everything that's spiritual came from God. You know, we didn't do it. We didn't make the ingredients um, for whatever, you know, anything, even like food that we eat or like our home or anything like that. All these quote elements are God's. And so it's his own son, you know, that he's asking for back in that way. But one could say that's pretty extreme. Why kill him like that? You know, <laughs> just stab him and all this kind of stuff. So. You know, again, this is uh, the God of the Bible, you know, peculiar is just a, a euphemism. That's a that's a nice way to put it. Uh, he's extreme. And in my opinion, uh, the evil that's on the earth right now is further evidence that that this is the God we're dealing with, because look how extreme he is. Um, all the wars popping off around the world, um, all the lies, um, all the perversions. Um, it needs a certain type of mastermind to or orchestrate that. <clears throat> so it's a good idea to fear an, an entity like that um, and also acknowledge that we can't understand um, very much of what he's doing. We do know to not take the mark of the beast because that's idiotic. Uh, another one. Um, now at the sort of, uh, also in the sort of family context, Luke 14, 26, if any man come to me and hate not his mother, sorry, his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and also his own life, he cannot be my disciple. So now we're talking about self-hatred, hatred for our family um, in order to be considered a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so he has lived this because um, he did not even love his own life. Uh, relative to uh, what the Most High um, commanded him to do. So he definitely uh, walked the walk, and um, this this would be extreme, you know, for uh, any other religion to promote for self-hatred relative to the love of God, and then um, putting God, an, an invisible entity that oftentimes we don't even feel can ex exist, <clears throat> above our own family, ab uh, above the very people that brought us into this world uh, from an earthly perspective. So uh, again, he's just, it's, it's further reiterated in that. Another example as well in Revelation uh, 3, 15 to 17 reads, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were caught cold or hot. Uh, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So this society requires us, wants us, tells us to try and accumulate as much as we can to have certainty in our life, um, and sometimes the people around us. But um, the Bible says a person who just focuses on that um, is wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, and um, is lukewarm. And to me, lukewarm is the best way to describe the um, majority of Christianity, you know, and I would say the world. Um, people don't go to extremes. It's like, no, the government wouldn't do that. They wouldn't put a chip in our body. They wouldn't do that. That's what people will say. Um, but again, we're dealing if the God of the Bible is, is real. And in my opinion, he is if the earth is flat and motionless. <clears throat> He's a God of extremes. And so his extreme righteousness in Jesus Christ will be matched with an extreme uh, sinfulness in uh, Satan and um, this B system and so he will uh, you know require that people have a electronic device in their body to tag them like a dog and um, that's the way God views people like that uh, and even that's a compliment you know it's there they are below an animal they're a beast uh, that's why they're described as a beast they're not even described as a dog or a donkey or anything like that they're described as a beast uh, somebody who would do that implement that and then receive it um, in their body so again revelation 3 15 17 reaffirms that um, god would rather somebody be basically an atheist than be somebody who just kind of is middle of the road christian you know and that's 
that actually, to be honest, for me, that makes a lot of sense because I find some virtue in atheism and the times that I felt like I've been an atheist throughout my life and I'm not uh, giving myself a pat on the back or like telling people to go be an atheist, especially in the days that we live in, that's a really bad idea. But um, it kind of makes sense, you know, from the sort of mind of God, spirit of God, because there's still some fruit in atheism because you just need to multiply everything by minus one. When you're in the middle, you just don't care, you know, and I think that's the thing that's possibly the most scary about the ball earth flat earth is you it's more scary to debate somebody or, or tell somebody about things like that who don't care because about anything really but definitely not the shape of the earth um you know it's sometimes better to be a, around people who um care you know and are staunch ball earthers because they can be won over you know the honest ones and so and that's happened you know with all of us ultimately who are flat earthers genuine ones but it, it makes sense, you know, why God could and would prefer somebody who is like adamantly against him than somebody who just doesn't care. Because like, what can he do, you know, to um, uh, sway that person to repentance and to acknowledge him? But um, so it makes sense from like a practical perspective. And another one, <clears throat> Matthew 530. Uh, this one, again, is at the personal level. So we went from money to family um, to just sort of religion i guess broadly and then now our ourself matthew five thirty reads and if thy right hand offend thee cut it off and cast it from thee for it is for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell so it shows to me that what we've done either in this lifetime or past or summation of the two or however that works uh, it decides what happens to us in the quote-unquote end times and afterlife. <clears throat> it dictates the level of punishment, you know, whether here on earth and beyond. And um, this reaffirms that, you know, that there is a sort of um, uh, earthly quote-unquote judgment feedback loop that um, our behavior dictates certain things that happen to us. <clears throat> but the extreme part of this is Jesus is saying, like, it's better to, like, cut your arm off then if your arm causes you to sin, obviously spiritual people know it's not the arm that's doing it. It's, it's our mind. Um, but again, this, this statement <clears throat> shows God's extreme hatred for sin. And he wants us to have that same hatred. <clears throat> you know, that's not taught anywhere, you know, because again, the world is completely filled with all types of lies. I mean, if we took this seriously, we'd literally not have to speak, you know, because in my opinion, we're forced to lie or be stupid or both. So people who take this literally, and some people do, um, I, I just don't feel like speaking to a lot of people because I just feel like I have to lie to them. So again, I'm not saying like I'm fulfilling this by any means, but it makes sense to a lot of us. Just intrinsically, innately, we, we want this to be true. We don't want um, to, to perish, <laughs> first of all, and we don't want our whole body cast into hell or anything like that. And we don't want to upset God. You know, and so uh, lies, being stupid, um, slander, gossip, all these things that are just everywhere, you know, on the, in my opinion, in the quote unquote truth community as well. It's just um, it's required. And Jesus would say it's better to like cut your tongue out, you know, to use the, this verse in that context. It's better just like cut your lips off, you know, tongue or, or whatever, burn your vocal cords if it's if it's a required if it's you if they're being if it's if those things are being used as an instrument to sin. And so uh, again, the world would not teach this. And in my opinion, uh, all these words sort of don't matter because God again is completely been, I don't even want to say diluted from the world, just removed. Like no one cares, you know, and I'm pointing at myself as well, but it's good to know these things, you know? And I think when that time comes, if it does, where we're forced to make a decision either one way or the other between, you know, money, um, ourself, family, or pleasure, choose God. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.